interest and, and feel more confident on how to do this. Um, now, in terms of differences, yeah, the majority of you think that it's very different to teach skills online than face-to-face. Uh, myths some facts about that. We will discuss it, uh, but we'll see that probably it's not as difficult uh, or as different as we might think it is. It's just that we probably need to rewire uh, our brain in terms of how to, to work with the skills. And last but not least, uh, do, you teach skill, do you teach skills with your coursebooks or um, your coursebook material with online resources? And good, most of you do a blend of both of them, and that's fantastic um, because I think that's what we should do, okay? Uh, even like in the classroom, right? It shouldn't be 100% uh, uh, book based or 100% material that comes uh, to students out of the blue. Um, so let's get the party started. Um, as I said, the agenda for today has mainly two focuses. We are going to be talking about the advantages of online teaching, okay, for each of the four language skills. Uh, as you can see, I'm just focusing on the advantages, don't want to be negative, okay. Uh, we'll not talk about the disadvantages because you might have already know that. Uh, and then we'll look into possible activities to implement in the course, uh, using both your course book material or um, either um, or, or online resources. All right. So um, let's uh, start with reading. Okay. And in order to start with reading, I um, have here some true or false and statements. I would like you to take some minutes and read the statements and try to think what the answer is, whether it's right or whether this is wrong, whether it's true, whether it's false. Okay, there are six brief statements um, and it's for you to have an, an, an opportunity to start reflecting about this. So number one says the structure of a reading lesson is different in an online lesson. Number two says whether learners do the reading task in the lesson or for homework depends only on their age. Number three, young learners are more likely to read texts in the lesson. Number four, if the lesson focus is reading for specific information, the learners can do the reading in class. Now, number five says, if the lesson focus is reading for detailed information, the learners can do the reading for homework. And six, it says, uh, when learners read the text for homework, the next le lesson can focus on checking the learners' understanding and follow-up work. So those are the six statements that I have for you. And let's start discussing them. Okay, so the structure of a reading lesson is different in an online lesson. Is that correct or incorrect? And that is incorrect, actually. Uh, the structure of a reading lesson is the same whether you are teaching it face to face or whether you are teaching it online. Uh, what the way we know how uh, to work with reading is applies to every single scenario. So we know that you would have your pre-reading, you would have your while reading, and then you would have your after or your follow-up or your, your post-reading activity. So the, the, the scheme of work would be exactly the same, all right? Um, so if we are going to present students with a text, we need to make sure that we do some pre-work with that. It can be at the level of the strategies or it can be at the level of Lexis. I mean, you, it's up to you. Then you would concentrate on the reading in itself with, its, with the activities. And finally, you will need to do a follow-up that could be a piece of writing, could be listening, could be uh, connecting it to, to some listening text. But the sequence is the same. So that's one thing we need to remember. This is not about learning how to teach again, okay? The way we know that uh, languages are acquired 
is the way we should we should keep on um, is what we should keep on doing even if it is online. All right. The other one said whether learners do their reading task in the lesson or for homework depends only on their age. And this is false. Okay. Um, sometimes uh, teachers, uh, I may have primary school teachers or elementary school teachers here, and they might think that all the reading needs to be done online in the lesson with them. Uh, and that is true. Uh, the little ones, uh, especially six years old, seven years old, are starting in the decoding process of text. They will need our help, so it will be very difficult for them to do uh, reading outside the lesson. And when I say lesson, remember I'm saying at the moment in which we all connect, okay? In online lessons is our lessons in which at some point, we have the opportunity to connect with, um, with our students. Um, as you know, we have the synchronous and the asynchronous, um, the synchronic and the asynchronic uh, type of uh, learning online, meaning whether we are together online or whether they are working uh, on their own the computer. And I, I assume that all of you are trying the best of your, 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 uh, power uh, to to try to have some minutes with them during the week at least online whenever possible and if that happens that's a good opportunity to work with reading with the little ones now with the other ones okay the not so little ones um doing reading on the platform online is literally a waste of time okay once the kids know how to read it's a waste of time unless you want to practice something specific, okay? But if it's not something specific, if it's not that you're teaching them a strategy or a sub skill or something, uh, it's better that they do it um, on their own and then you use the uh, synchronic moment of the, of the instruction for um, exploiting the activity, discussing the answers and do the follow-up. Okay, um, let's remember that uh, students, uh, most of our students, whether they are children, teenagers or adults, they are used to seeing the computer not as a tool to work, but mainly as a tool for uh, enjoyment or recreational purposes. So we really need to try to, to respect that somehow, okay? Because we need to be aware that in these days, we are somehow invading their, their privacy, all right? Um, then, uh, number three, young learners are more likely to read texts in the lesson. As I said before, this is true. Uh, my piece of advice is that even up to the age of eight, try to read the text with them, all right? Uh, all this is already frightening enough for them so as on top of that uh, to have to cope with the with the um load of reading a text on their own so with the little ones let's try to respect that now if the lesson number four says if the lesson focus is reading for specific information the learners can do the reading in class and the answer of course is yes and this is one of the examples that i said in which if you're working with the text for something specific, then that's a good opportunity for reading in class. But if it's something general, um, if it's not that you're really trying to teach uh, a reading strategy at that moment, don't ask them to read the text. And number five says, if the lesson focus is reading for detailed information, um, the learners can do reading uh, for homework. Um, and here the answer is correct okay when it's uh, detailed information such as like for example uh, uh, spotting the reference okay what does it refers to in this sentence or what is the author's uh, intention or this or that all that very detailed information that will take lots of time for them to read uh, and, and it's not something that needs to be, to be done um, in class with you, 
okay um so so uh don't don't waste your time there um something that i probably i think uh Jimena, we didn't say this but all this session is being recorded um and then you can contact your richmond um rep and they will share the recording with you so don't worry about recordings uh at all okay um just that that announcement um and let's go back number six it says when learners read a text for homework the next le lesson can focus on checking the learners understanding and follow up work and of course the answer here is yes okay uh that's the idea so we can do some pre-reading okay with them that pre-reading can be in a synchronic or asynchronic format that is up to you i know some of you probably can really teach your lessons fully online meaning they are with you uh on a platform using zoom skype whatever i know that some of you are really finding that very difficult so you need to try to teach everything as asynchron as asynchronic as possible if that's your case then do the pre-reading with an with asynchronic activities do uh the wild reading if it's not reading for specific information if it is general reading if it is detailed information or if it is reading uh extensively do it asynchronically as well and just use the synchronic moments for the follow-up which can be the the rich moments for for interaction so in terms of advantages okay uh for reading online i think one of the main advantages is the wide variety of materials that is available online um we all have our course books and we need to use our course books and probably you're in this situation in which mommy daddy or the the adult bought its material and they want to use the book and it's fantastic and we really need the books as teachers because they are like a gasp of air for us right uh, it's like there is a moment we cannot keep producing materials 24 uh, 7. i mean looking for materials is lots of time that we're investing once we find the material designing the activities it's lots of time and then we need the time to teach and then we need the time to correct and look back into the same process so that's why it's good to have a book you have to use a book use the material that's why the authors already did all the work for us what we have to do is in this moment more than ever to enrich that material with the wide diversity of materials that we have online and i think teaching reading online uh, has this advantage of all the texts that are available okay um the other advantage is that content is constantly updated and sometimes probably it has happened to you you're teaching with your course book and it talks about uh, i don't know you're reading a biography and it says that the person has one two three children and you know that at the moment that person has uh, more children and and it's because uh, the book was published three years before or something like that so the good thing about this is that if you can read the text that you have in your book and you can give them another text online and they can do comparative analysis, okay? And they can enrich and you can work with Venn diagrams, etc. okay? So um, the material online is fully updated and I love that, okay? The other thing is the variety of text types that we have, okay? Sometimes uh, in books we have stories, we have articles, uh, we have um, novels, but here you can have stories, articles, but you can also have blogs. You can work with posts, with wikis. So you, we can really teach our students about a wider typology of texts. Um, the other thing is that learners are more used to reading online than, than from print books these days, okay? Uh, it's not very common to see kids carrying print books uh, nowadays. What we can see is, them reading uh i don't know their favorite websites online they might be using uh ebooks but most mostly what they read is text messages tweets uh instagram well instagram yeah you can read something uh but you they mainly read in social media so um they are used to reading from the screen than from the page okay and and another advantage i think that exists is that um uh, 
reading can be uh, reading online can be used for intensive or extensive purposes okay and i think that's great there are so many texts especially stories and this that they can read and uh if you start being careful uh probably they are reading a bit more now than what they used to be reading but let's start with the practice activities and for the the first one is a reading race um let's imagine i have this page from a book okay and this book is about is uh, information about an island okay is the uh, takai takai's island okay we don't know what the takai's island is um but we can let's say that we are doing some pre-reading activities okay and that we are working in a synchronic way so we can do a reading race and for the reading race what we do is we try to prepare a set of general knowledge questions to give to students okay so um for example we can ask them uh, how many islands are there in the world where is the Polynesia and uh, where is uh, which is the largest island in the in the Polynesia and how far is I don't know your home country from the Polynesia and who discovered the Polynesian islands okay and, and you can start uh, uh, writing the questions in your chat room okay so you use the chat room and you present one question at a time and what they have to do is they need to go online and start researching on the spot okay and the first one who has the answer types it back in the in the chat room or copies and pastes okay and it's an active way of uh, expanding the, the the reading so they instead of reading these texts with you you can ask them to read the text from the book um from the book uh, when they are not online but with you they practice something that is more interactive okay you activate general knowledge and at the same time you keep them motivated and we know that games are fantastic and they really they always keep them uh going so this is a good way of working at the pre-reading level um in a, in a synchronic way for example okay what you can do as a follow-up uh you can allow students then uh to prepare two or three general questions okay so they have to prepare their own general questions and they take turns and they write the questions um in the chat room and the class including you let's forget that you're also learning it's they, they find it cool when, when they see us being part of the activity okay also you um, i mean go online and try to get the answer okay and at the same time this is an opportunity to to help them read more and become become a bit more of a researcher um, when it comes to reading so that's one reading activity that i think is really cool and that helps us integrate the book and uh and the online resources the other one is called five clicks away um five clicks away to 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 play to do this activity what you need to do is you need to find a website that has many links okay so for example i think that uh websites uh, for newspapers are fantastic because as you can see there are many many links with the types of uh news that are available etc but i chose this website you can choose any other website okay or they can choose their own websites as well okay what you are going to ask them is you're going to ask them to enter a website and click five times okay so they need to click five different links once they reach the fifth link they need to take a screenshot of that link okay just as i did here of course i didn't i didn't um i, I didn't uh, click five times i, I, I just uh, this is the, the main website this is the landing page um but once students uh, got the screenshot from that website what they're going to ask them is that on their platform and i don't know you may be using schoology you may be using google classroom you may be using a model you may be using the platform from your publisher for example, the Richmond Learning uh, Platform, which I think is the, the best one, but you can use um, any platform, okay, that you're using to keep in touch with your students. And what students need to do is they are going to write a short summary of the content that they found there. 
So this is a great activity to integrate reading and writing at the same time, and also for us to learn about uh, our students' interest, which I think is fantastic because sometimes we look for the material, but that material might not be very interesting for students. So when they find, uh, when, when we do an activity like this, then we get an idea of what type of websites they, they like surfing, okay, and where we can get information from. So again, uh, I'm a strong believer that skills should be integrated, and I think this is a cool activity for students to integrate uh, reading and writing and to personalize reading. And this is also fantastic for uh, extensive reading uh, purposes. Then the other activity is um, block log. Okay, um, for block log, what you need is uh, you, need, you need to get your students to choose a block of their choice for some time. Okay, so for example, here is uh, a website, okay, that has the 50, 50 best blogs in the world. Uh, I think it's it's a website that you can recommend uh, to your students if they are not bloggers, um, but they can look for any website that they want. The, the thing here is that they need to choose a, a blog. And this is, again, this would be more for extensive reading purposes in, in the long period, okay? And what you're going to ask them is you're going to ask them to, to make a blog log for learners to complete. So you're going to create, for example, this block log, uh, and they need to complete their name, they need to write the, the name, uh, the block's name, they need to uh, write the address of that blog, they need to tell us what the block is about, they need to uh, tell us which entries they have uh, read, okay? They simply cut and paste their, their the, the, the links, okay, or the addresses, Okay, and then what they need to do is they need for each of the titles, for each of the entries, okay, that they write the link, they need to write a reaction, whether they liked it or they didn't like it, whether it was interesting, and if so, why it was interesting, okay. And finally, they need to write an overall summary, okay, of that blog. And after the summary, they need to write whether they would recommend the blog to others or not. Once they do that, once they complete the blog, they need to share it again in the, in the, in the forum of your class, okay? And this is something that can be done weekly or it can be done every two weeks, okay? This is up to you, depending on the level of your students, okay? If it's not a blog, um, you can probably do this with uh, YouTube channels, let's say. But the idea here is for list for reading purposes. I would do this something similar for listening uh, purposes uh, with YouTube channels. But I think having a log is something useful. And again, the, the cool thing is that it will give us an insight into what our students are into uh, at the moment of reading or, or listening, okay? Um, I see um, some people are writing in the uh, in the chat room. Okay, uh, if I can share this information by email, um, of course I will share the PowerPoint with my colleagues at Richmond, and when they send you the 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 video, they can send you the PowerPoint. But anyway, you would have the PowerPoint here on the in the presentation as well. Uh, so probably that will be easier uh, for you. The other reading activity is short stories. Uh, and we cannot do, talk about reading if we don't talk about stories. Now, the thing is reading, as I said, for students is mainly at the, at the message level. So uh, the 140 characters rule, I think, even though Twitter does not follow it anymore, but I, I think it applies to most students these days. They don't like reading extensively. So there is something that um, I love and always use is short stories, okay? So what you can do is you can choose a short story, okay? And you can copy it uh, into the, um, 
the, the forum in your platform. And then you can write a short review next to it. You write the review, not the students. You write the review, okay, of the stories. Why are you going to write the review? Because it will be a model for what's coming next. Now, there are websites with short stories. You don't need to go and look for short stories in the, a book or something. Some of the books may already have the short stories and you can use that as a stepping stone. But if your students don't have a book, you can use, for example, um, is, uh, this website for short stories or this other website or these other websites. You go to Google and there are many websites that have lots and lots of short stories uh, already designed. And some of them are 25 word stories or 50 word stories, okay? So you can, you can choose. Some of them are recommended, are graded by genre. Some of them are uh, recommended for, um, because of the students' age, ages. So you choose uh, what type of story. It's very easy for you. But the idea is that, remember, you're just, you're just going to read to choose one story and you're going to write the review. Once you did that and you posted it, you're going to get students to read the story and to comment on it and your review. So for example, they're going to say, well, I think the story is kind of creepy or wow, I really love the message behind the story. I don't think the review is fair. The review says that this is a story for children, but I'm an adult and I think that uh, this story also has a message for me, for example, this and this and that, okay? So they need, to interact with your choice and your production. Once you have that, you would ask students now to go and to choose their own story. And they need to write at least a 25 word, uh, a 25 word long review to share with the classroom. 25 word long is a paragraph, literally. It's not that you're writing a lot. And that is as much as they are used to writing uh, in, on the internet, uh, in, in blogs or in forums or whatever, okay? So I think that that's a good start, especially with the little ones. With the, with the, with the older ones, you can expand it to 50 words or 70 words or 100 words. But let's also remember that 100 words is a lot. It's like a B1 level, a B1 plus, okay? So remember the level of your students, okay? Uh, but this is something cool. And what you're going to do is, then students are going to work with that material that uh, their classmates found. And they are going to read the stories, they are going to select one or two stories to read and to comment on the review. As you can see, this is something that I always did as a teacher, is to let my students work for me, okay? And why? Not because I'm lazy, it's because when it comes to choices, they are the ones who better know what they like and what they don't like. And when they have to choose material, and when they have to produce text, they really work at a higher level than what we probably would demand from them. Because we teachers sometimes are very patronizing in that sense. So, so uh, I really encourage you to do these kind of activities online in which you trigger it, but the bulk of all the research is done from students. And with that, you keep working and you expand it, okay? And in the process, we get to live a life that, as I always say, it's very important for us teachers. Um, the other activity I wanted to share, I just selected some activities, okay? Because I could keep talking about more and more activities, but I tried to select uh, four or five activities for each skills because uh, I only have one hour for this presentation. Um, is a jigsaw task. And we have always worked with jigsaw reading and this and that. So um, how can we do this online? Uh, let's imagine we, we were talking about stories and I said text uh, course books have stories. Let's uh, work now with a story from the book, okay? Or from a website. Again, it's up to you. For example, I got this uh, primary book. Uh, you're going to see that I chose books from different levels. Huh? So remember, you can apply this to any age group. So this is a, a book for more or less seven-year-old students. And this story is actually a comic, okay? And I know that my little ones can read only at this level. And I need to maximize this. So I'm going to, to, to give them this page or the, I, I'm going to choose a story. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get students into groups and ask them to read the story. Now, how do I get students in groups? There are different things. If you're using Zoom, which I love using, there is uh, a function in Zoom that is called breakout rooms. And in breakout rooms, they can, you, you can group them into uh, different subgroups. And that's if you're doing this uh, in a synchronic way. If you're doing it asynchronically, what I would recommend you is that you form groups and you ask them to work through email or through uh, WhatsApp, et cetera, et cetera. What will that depend on? The ages of your students, again. Um, if they are little ones, I would really recommend doing this activity synchronically, okay? Um, so anyway, you're going to get them into groups and then you're going to create a different task for each group, okay? Uh, that different task can be, uh, I don't know, some students are going to uh, read for these, some students are going to read for that, etc., etc. okay? Uh, and this is fantastic if you have different abilities in, in, the, in the group, okay? You can assign uh, the, the type of activity depending on the level of students. When they finish, you ask them to report the results in the forum or orally in the meeting, okay? So if it is synchronically, they would all share the activity. They would all share the results. If it is asynchronically, they would write the results. Now, if it is asynchronically and you don't want them to write because as we say, as we saw, uh, listening and reading was the, were the skills that you felt more confident at the mo or that the ones that you were do, um, doing a lot online. Um, this is a way to get them writing. But if you want to keep on working with, um, with students' production, but from a spoken form, I would highly recommend, and I'm a fan of cell phones in the classroom, and now that school authorities cannot forbid them from us, they can record short videos and to present the results of their activity, and that can be your source of, uh, um, uh, of input in order to assess your students' uh, oral production. So again, remember, and what they do is they upload the videos. If they don't upload the videos on the platform because you don't want the video to be uh, out in public in a platform because the students are, are young or whatever, what, what, you are, what you are going to do is you're going to ask them to send it to you by email. If it is mommy and daddy, mommy and daddy can send them to you by email. And why? Are you going to allow this? Because this is a group activity, okay? So it's not that you will need to watch 300 videos in one week, okay? It's a group of students um, recorded one video. And what you're going to do is, okay, this week, um, this member of the group is going to record the video. Next week, the other member, and so on and so forth. So that every single week you can have an idea of how each student is performing orally, but at the same time, uh, you don't need to spend the entire weekend watching short segments of videos, okay? So that's, uh, those were five activities I selected for reading. Now, writing, uh, advantages of doing uh, writing online. Uh, I think that one of the advantages is that activities can be book or internet based, again, uh, and can be done while in class or after it. While in class, if you work with Google Docs, uh, for example, they can all be writing collaboratively, etc. By the way, there was a fantastic webinar from one of our colleagues on tools uh, to use online. Um, uh, you can watch that webinar, uh, ask your, your rep uh, for it. And I think there is a repetition coming up because it was a very popular session uh, as well. Uh, he may, might, might be able to tell us about it uh, when, when, when that repetition will take place. It okay. happened this morning, sorry. Oh, oh okay. But, 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 but they, can, they, they can ask their reps for, 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 the, for the session recorded, okay? Absolutely. Uh, so, um, again, you can do this online or uh, offline, okay? Again, there is a wide range of uh, sites where students can upload their, their work. It can be your own platform. It can be a blog. You can have create your own blog, it can be wikis, I mean, you name it, all right? And if you are not very techy, which I think is what has happened to all of us, we have discovered how 
illiterate we all are when it comes to technology. I was telling some of my colleagues for the last 20, 25 years, we have been talking about technology and we thought we knew it all until COVID came, slapped us and, and, and showed us that we really have a lot to learn. So if you are just like me in this learning mode, um, what you can do is simply uh, use the forum in your, in your platform, okay? Um, again, they can, they can produce any kind of text, okay, uh, in terms of length, and they can uh, publish, uh, you can publish students' work online, and that can be very motivating for them. And why do I say this? Because we ask, them, we ask students to go on to read from blogs, but why isn't the world reading what our students are producing? So I think it's really cool if you can have your class blog and if students can start producing once you prove read all the material and everything and you know that it's ready for publication so that everybody can go and read, okay? And if you're talking about the environment, if you're talking about uh, health, whatever, and someone looks for that, okay, they can find the, the input from your students, okay? Um, okay, as I said, there are some tools that really lend it, uh, themselves to this, like blogging or Google Docs, okay? So, um, activities. So your picture, my story, this is the name of this activity. Uh, and the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to get students to look for a striking picture to tell a story and post them in the forum of your class, okay? Or it can be in your class blog if you have a class blog, okay? Whether you have it. And what they need to do is they also need to write the theme. Okay, so they, they chose a picture and they, they write uh, sports, health, uh, horror, whatever. They need to write the theme. Now, this can be done with any picture that they find or it can be done with a picture that they found in their book. And the, the magic thing here, the magical thing, sorry, is that they shouldn't say the page number, okay? So uh, the idea is that they also play with their books at home, okay? So it's up to you. If you don't want them to be Googling for images because you never know what they can find, you can ask them, find a book in the book that you, uh, the, in the book that you like and post it together with a theme, okay? So once you have a selection of pictures, and again, this is get the students to work for you while you get to rest during the weekend. So they do the work, they do the research, they look for the pictures, they think of the topics. What you're going to, and they upload all of them on the platform, what you're going to do is you're going to assign a picture to every single of your students, okay? So now every single student has a different picture selected by a classmate together with a theme. And you're going to ask them to write a story. And why are we writing a story? Because in my book, in this unit, I need to write a story. So we were working with story writing, but I don't want to do the activity in the book because it all becomes too dense, okay? It's like using the book and writing the book. Let's try to get out from the book and do this. So they're going to write the story using the, um, the um, diagram with, with all the explanation of how to write the story, the stages, the type of paragraphs, etc., etc. They have the guidance there. They write the story, and once you have the stories, okay, um, what you can do uh, is sorry. You're, you're, they are going to write the stories using instructions, and once you have the stories, this is up to you. You can go and correct the stories immediately, or what you're going to do is you're going to return the story, the picture and the picture to the original owner. And what they need to do is they need to read and then write a message to the writer of the story and saying like, wow, this is interesting. I didn't have this in mind. In my mind, I had this idea. Or yeah, we agreed. I also pictured this, this and this, and they need to quote which information from the original story is similar to the ones that they had thought of. So this is an opportunity to really make writing not so academic in the sense that everything is for a mark, but also you're integrating reading, you're working with students' motivation, 
And it's not that that initial motivation that they selected a picture and a theme then vanished because you killed it because somebody else is using it. No, that person receives and sees like, wow, are we thinking alike or not? And this is a great opportunity also for class members to get to know each other a, 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 a bit better, let's say. Then there is another one that I, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I, he, here is uh, some instructions that you can give to the students. Uh, I had forgotten that I, I created the instructions. So you can tell them, okay, look at the picture and imagine you were, okay, there, what happened, etc., etc. You can tell them how many words you want them to, to write in the stories. You can tell them what they need to include, for example, where you were, who you were with, what you saw, what you, what you did, okay? All that. Then you can tell them um, that they need to proofread the story and that they need to post it with a picture and to answer questions from the classmates or to share it with, with your own classmates, okay? So you can always give them a, a protocol with, with all the, the instructions of, of, of what to do. I think something you have probably all discovered is that when you work online, everything needs to be crystal clear. And this is why uh, I'm trying to show you here how to give the instructions, okay? It needs to be really word by word, what is it that you want, first stage, second stage, etc., etc. If not, teaching online becomes a nightmare. And uh, I'm not going to tell you about this because I know you, you, you are already probably experiencing it. The other activity is the anti-protocols. And I'm kind of a rebel. That's why I always love these activities. And um, this is an activity that especially, I wouldn't recommend this activity for the little ones, probably with the very little ones, because they might not fully get it. But of course, this depends on, on groups and students. But uh, teenagers, that uh, they love being against everything, or adults, that uh, we sometimes love being against everything. This is a great, cool activity, especially to activate high levels of thinking. What you're going to do is you're going to ask students, um, uh, or you're going to get them in pairs, this is up to you, um, or trios, and you're going to ask them to think of what things not to do for something. Once they do that, you're going to ask them to write an anti-protocol with at least five recommendations and share them with the class in the forum or your class blog. Again, imagining that you created a class blog. Okay, so for example, just in order to clarify this, what to do if you have a computer problem? Now remember, this is not a protocol, this is an anti-protocol. So what, what to do if you have a computer program? First of all, panic, which we know that that's not what we should do, but panic. Uh, think that you have lost everything, that we know that that's not what we have to think. Uh, do not ask for help, okay, which we know that we have to do. Uh, shout at your computer and hit the keyboard desperately. Okay, I could have written there desperately, okay? Um, throw your computer away and buy a new one, okay? So these are actually five things we shouldn't do, but it's the anti-protocol. And this is something cool, this is different. It goes against the norm, okay? We generally ask students to produce the, 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 the very predictable thing. Let's ask them to write the not so predictable thing so that they can be very crazy and they can, they can get really creative, okay? Um, then you can get students to add one more uh, to the list of uh, the anti-protocol that uh, our students created, uh, okay? They can read it, it's like, oh, when you have a computer problem, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I thought those fives. Uh, you can also say, Okay, uh, put it under the water and, and, see, and see if it cools down the computer. I don't know. Okay, um, you, you, can, you can ask them to, to add one more element to the list, okay, to any of their classmates' protocols. Here are some other possible topics I thought that, that could be cool for them to, to write. The first one, of course, is how to improve your English. This is something students are always trying to, to, to look an answer for. Okay, how can I improve my English? Okay, so ask them to write what not to do, okay? 
ways that will not help them to improve their English so that they can really, oh, I should definitely stop doing this, okay? Uh, how to study for a test or uh, how to have fun on a Friday night in your town or uh, how to do well in a job interview if you're teaching adults, how to be organized, okay? Some, some, some students have problems with that, okay? Good, I need to rush up because uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, I'd like some information. This is the other activity uh, I have for you, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to, again, get students in pairs or you're going, you're, and you're going to assign each of them a role. Uh, remember, the pairing can be asynchronically. This is something that they can be working while they are not connected with you. So, for example, student A, you're a travel agent. Student B, you would like information about tourist information. This is a typical thing that appears in books, okay? Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to ask them to write a text. This can be done interactively through email, through Google Docs, okay? Or, um, I don't know, through messaging on your platform, okay? And you're going to ask students to share the conversation with you. Why did I... Why did I uh, choose this activity to share with you today? Because I think this is a type of writing that students are used to doing, the message thing, okay? Um, something to make it cooler is to use the fake WhatsApp creator, okay? And you can ask them to give you a WhatsApp image instead of giving you the text, to give you a WhatsApp image of the conversation. So one is the travel agent and the other is, is uh, the, the tourist, okay? So there I created one, okay? There are multiple fake WhatsApp creators online. For example, you have this fake whatsapp.com slash generator, okay? And they can create and they, they, they change colors depending on who is talking. So this is fantastic also for them to organize uh, the, the conversation text format. And it's also very real life like. Now, if they are adults, what they can do instead of using the, the creator, they can actually have the conversation through their phones in WhatsApp, and then they just take screenshots of their phones and they send you the, the phone. But if they are kids and they don't have phones, that's a, that's a cool activity to do. Uh, the other one is what's the, what's the story? Uh, in this one, again, you're going to get students to think of a story. They can do this individually or in groups, okay? now. In order to create a story, you can select pictures and images from your book, actually, okay? As I did here, this is an activity, and actually, as you can see, this comes from a grammar uh, exercise in my book, but I'm not using it for grammar. But I think uh, I can create a story with this or not, okay? So they, they, they need to think of a story, okay? And you're going to uh, ask them to write the story in dialogue format, okay? Um, once they have the dialogues, you're going to get students to illustrate the story, okay? Uh, and this is fantastic, especially for the little ones that love drawing. And the little ones that probably are writing at the word level or phrase level, comics are fantastic. Now for the not that uh, little ones, uh, the, the comic is also really cool because the graphic novel is, is a genre that is very popular now. Now, what happens if students are as uh, dumb as I am when it comes to drawing? I always uh, found this website really cool. Uh, this is a website in which um, you can create your own comics. So you look for different scenarios, okay? It can be a city, it can be a shop, it can be a, the park, it can be the part of a house, etc. And you can add as many scenes as you want you can create the characters, how many characters do you want, if they want to be seated down, or if you want, to be, if you want them to be standing up, hands, uh, arms up in the air, arms down, uh, facing each other, not. I mean, it's fantastic. Students can spend hours here, and they type their text. And once they, they finish, they can download a PDF. Now, the, the free version of this, will have the watermark with uh, the, that says story, uh, storyboard uh, that, uh, dot com. I really don't care about it, but if you really care about it, what you can do is you can always screenshot and they screenshot the, the story from the website itself. 
and then they put it in a Word document or something. But I think the PDF works wonderfully because it's not that the watermark covers the, the text, okay? It's in a very light uh, gray shade, uh, so, so it's fantastic. And this is a cool way for students to really bring their stories alive. And another adaptation that you can have for this is that in, they can write an entire story, not, not in comic format, and once they finish that, you can, you can tell them, okay, now write, write it in dialogue format, okay? So if you're practicing direct and indirect speech, for example, it's beautiful, okay? It's a cool way to blend, to blend uh, things uh, um, as you're teaching skills. The other one is fake, that's fake news. And I, I love this activity because we are in, uh, in times where fake news are everywhere. So what you're going to do is you're going to ask students to write a news article based on a, uh, a tax from your course book or a reversion of your local newspaper uh, news, okay, or a website, etc., with wrong information, okay? So they're going to, you're going to ask students to create an article together with one or two, uh, one or two more true stories, okay? So here is, just, just to give you an idea. There are, there are, there are these um, websites that I like, which are uh, websites that really create a newspaper. So when you look, as you can see the pictures, when you look at it, it really, it really uh, looks like a, like a news story. Um, so you're going to ask them to write an article, okay, with something that is not right, okay, and it's about their country or the world or whatever. And they're going to then put uh, in the, on, the paper, on the page from that newspaper other stories that they simply copied and paste, um, pasted from another website. They are accurate stories. What you have to do is students share that with the class and they need to spot which is the fake news that uh, appears on every single newspaper. Uh, and this is really cool because again, you're in integrating reading and writing at the same time. Of course, this, is, this can have many adaptations. You can also have, but I'm going to use that strategy for something else, but uh, in, for another skill, but you can, instead of being a fake news, it can be a fake line on the news, okay? So it can be one article, but they change some information in the article to make it fake, okay? They, I think students love all this rebellious thing, okay? Good, fantastic. Oof, I'm, I feel like Speedy Gonzalez here, running. Uh, listening, uh, activities for practicing listening. I know you're doing uh, lots of listening. Basically, three advantages. I think that materials are up to date online and there is lots of material for audio work online. So please benefit from that. Uh, you can also find authentic materials as well as ELT related materials because there are uh, podcasts for ELT learners. And you can generate activities that promote more extensive listening. Than, and if you really start paying attention, actually probably now your students may be listening to more English than uh, what they listened in the, in the classroom, okay? And of course you can, uh, because now everything is digital, you can upload all the, the audios from the books and work with them. One of the things uh, that I wanted to clarify is online listening, okay? That um, this activity, I don't know if it is really an activity, but uh, it's try to go online and select appropriate listening activities from any of the multiple websites that exist in English. I mean, Richmond in its platforms has lots of listening activities, okay? That are already designed there with the audience at the level, uh, that self-correct, so that, as you know, is fantastic. Um, what you're going to do, if you're not going to use your platform, you're going to ask students to solve the activity online and share the answers uh, through private message if the platform that you found with this listening activity does not uh, give you the answers, okay? Probably the, uh, it's, an, it's, an, it's an, a website that gives the student the, the answers, but of course it doesn't have a mark book, so you don't get to know the answers. So you can ask students, okay, 
share the answers with me and I will also keep track of your marks. But again, with all the platforms, we can create uh, tasks for true or false, for fill in the blanks, for multiple choice, and use, use the audio materials that come with the books, okay? Um, and, and you can adapt the activities. Don't do the same activities that appear in the book, remember, because that's something that they can do at home, listening to the uh, course book audio. What you can do is, okay, let's listen to the audio again, but now with this activity, and you can adapt the activity. The other cool thing, uh, then, is, okay, listen, listen to the audio, uh, answer, answer the questions, okay, then you correct, and you can ask them to go and to listen to the audio again and to design a different activity. I don't know, three, four, multiple choice, or two or four, so fill in the blanks, that they use the, the audio material to create more activities. And again, we get to live a life, which I think is very important, okay? Now, my favorite podcast. Uh, this is an activity in which uh, uh, you're going to share the instructions with students through the forum. For example, you're going to ask them, okay, listen to at least three podcasts. They need to choose one, okay? Um, and they need to complete this description, okay? They need to give us the link, they need to give us the topic of the podcast, they need to tell us why they liked it, and they need to, to tell us how often a new podcast is produced uh, there. This is kind of, as you can see, uh, similar to the reading activity I, I presented. And, and the reason is because reading and listening, because they are productive skills, you can really um, use activities uh, for reading, you can adapt them for listening and the other way around. Anyway, once they, they posted that comment, okay, um, they, they, they post uh, all this information in the class forum, and then they listen to at least two podcasts from uh, classmates and comment on them, okay? So that's, those are the instructions, okay? And once students completed the task, you will ask them to, to read and to comment on at least two podcasts uh, of their classmates, and students should listen to at least three episodes per month. That's or per week, I don't know, depending on how often the website keeps uploading podcasts. But this is an, an activity that I think is really cool for extensive listening and uh, which really helps students. Um, I know I'm running out of time. Um, some people are raising their hands. Remember, I will answer all the questions at the end. I swear to God, I don't care if it takes me two more hours. Um, yeah, Nico, that's what I was going to tell you. Take your time. Don't worry. Okay. Questions <laughs> in the chat room so far don't really have to do with your content. It's other technical questions that I can address. So okay. take right. your time, take a deep breath, and move <laughs> forward. <laughs> don't worry. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the thing is that there, there are so, so many things uh, to do that... Um, uh, I don't know. I have many activities and I thought that it was going to be to take shorter, really. Um, anyway, here is a selection of uh, some websites with postcard, with podcasts that I always used uh, as a teacher, which I think uh, could be of use to use, okay, like Breaking News English, China 2382, ELT Podcast, okay, English Conversations, ELT Business, news if you if you teach business english okay esl pod okay or podcasts in english um again this is a tiny micro selection i did there are a lot more uh websites out there that you can you can really suggest to your students and the cool thing about these websites is that they they have everything organized uh by level the other thing that I highly recommend, and there was a session last week on English Attack. That's a platform that uh, probably, if you're working with Richmond, uh, they, they may have uh, tell, told you about. And it's a, it's a platform that you have thousands, thousands of short video segments uh, already with activities and um, organized by levels, by topic. I call it the Netflix for ELT with uh, YouTube uh, segment videos. It's a fantastic website. Uh, so if you want to learn more about it, 
contact your Richmond local rep, uh, and this could also that 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 uh, um, website can also help you uh, to practice listening activities. Now, the other activity is what's my line, and this is kind of like. Uh, like, like in the show, right? Um, you're going to ask students to look for two film trailers, okay? Uh, there are many websites, okay, that daily, I would say, post all the trailers uh, of new films. Of course, now with COVID, I don't know if this is happening as, as often. But uh, what the, one of the, of the websites I used a lot is the one for Apple. Okay, from Apple, sorry, the, the iTunes, so the trailers.apple.com. Okay, and the other one is a Yahoo Entertainment.com slash entertainment slash um, movies. And there you have lots of trailers. I mean, lots, meaning all the trailers from, I think, all the movies. Okay, and you can uh, select some uh, trailers or you can ask students to select their own trailers. I, I'm really into asking students to do because as you may have detected, I'd really like to use my time, uh, my family time for my family, okay, and get students to work. So let's say students look for two film trailers, and you're going to ask them to write two lines from it and to make up one. So in all the trailers, the cool thing about trailers is that dialogues are very short, okay? So they are going, you're going to ask them to listen carefully, so it's very intensive listening because they literally need to transcribe two lines that they heard, and then they need to invent one line that is not there, is not said. Once they have that, their students are going to post their activity in your class forum, okay? So once they have the activity, they, they, are, going, they are going to post the link to the trailer and they're going to post the three lines. What students have to do is students need to watch the trailers and they need to detect which is the, 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 the made up line, okay, in, for each of the trailers. This is a cool activity, again, because students feel that they, their material, their creation was not just for assessment purposes, purposes, it was for their classmates also to work. They love finding the mistakes, they love uh, spotting things, okay? And they are working a lot on things that they are really interested in. So I, this activity has always really worked for me and I highly recommend it and it's like a treasure hunt with movies and um, it's a great activity to ask students to listen for detailed information. Spot the difference is very similar, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to select a news story, okay? And you're going to copy the news in your platform forum, okay? Again, you can use uh, the, 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 oh, sorry. Senior moment. You're going. You're going to select the news from uh, a local newspaper, um, if they write in English, or any of traditional newspapers. Or you can use uh, any of the web the websites that you detected. They really like reading from the five click away reading activity. Okay. Again, this is up to you. The thing is, you're going to choose one of the texts. Okay, and you're going to copy the original version on the platform. Then you're going to record yourself retelling the story, okay? But you're going to make some changes in the audio format. So this is like, you know, how um, news programs, they, they, they can watch, you can watch the news on TV, but then those news channels also have their website. And sometimes the information is not quite exactly the same because on the website, they may have updated with new figures or whatever. So the cool thing is that, first of all, they will be able to listen to you if you're working asynchronically. Uh, this is a way for them to also get to listen to you speaking in English. And they are, you're going to ask them to read the text, read the original written version, and read your version. And again, spot the difference. This is kind of like what you ask them to do with uh, the trailers, but they creating the different... Uh, uh, information, the different lines, sorry. In this case, is you creating the different information. Now, 
if you're teaching advanced learners and you really want to practice to check their uh, speaking ability instead of uh, you creating the listening recording you can ask them to record themselves and with the new adaptations of the of the story so this is an opportunity for them to uh, practice listening when they listen to the recording that you created or their classmates created but if you ask them to record themselves also it's an opportunity for you to assess at least their speaking activity, uh, their speaking ability at the level of intonation, pronunciation, word stress, um, phonemes, etc., etc. Okay, it's not at the level of interaction, but it's you can really assess speaking performance at, in those levels. Okay, three skills already have gone by. We have the last one: speaking, which is a skill that uh, some some teachers find it difficult to implement if they cannot teach synchronically. Uh, in terms of advantages, students can practice speaking skills with the teacher or with students at any time during class or after it. Uh, and I think this is really cool because uh, now with, with mobiles, they can record themselves uh, using WhatsApp or um, they can use a computer and record themselves uh, with our video cameras. I mean, there are multiple opportunities in which we can really see them uh, speaking, even if it's not at the moment in class when, when they are with us. Um, the other cool thing is that uh, you can bring a guest. Uh, now, the cool thing is that if you have a friend in Australia or South Africa or whatever, uh, now they can be in your class uh, uh, without having to pay for a plane ticket. So. You can use Skype, you can use Zoom, and you can, uh, together with the platform that you're using, um, and you can help students to practice speaking with a native speaker, for example, if you really believe that from time to time it's good that they have contact with native speakers. Okay, so let's not forget about that, uh, because the good thing about COVID and online speaking instruction is that we can do it easily. Um, you can closely monitor uh, students speaking and give them more specific feedback, okay, than in a regular class to class. Because if they record the videos, and I know, I really know we will not have enough time to watch 300 videos during the weekend. But if you do it uh, weekly, okay, this week you record yourself, this week you record yourself, you can really get to give them more accurate feedback. If you're working with Zoom and breakout rooms, I say Zoom and breakout rooms because that's what I use a lot. Um, it's fantastic. You can, really, you can really do a very nice work with, with them giving feedback. And um, again, it's an opportunity for them to practice a lot, okay? Um, and I think that because they will be recording themselves so much through either through videos or mp3s uh, because they've recorded uh, through whatsapp or whatever a piece of audio uh, or using their voice uh, notes on the cell phone you can now have a speaking portfolio uh, we were so used to having the writing portfolios but now we can have speaking portfolios and during all these months, they can see their progression, okay, of how their speaking performance has improved. And you can ask them, okay, record yourself, check these and these and these words in terms of pronunciation, these words in terms of this and that, okay? And they can have version one, version two, version three of their, of their uh, listening, uh, of their recordings. So try to work into the speaking portfolio because it really helps a lot. Activities. Um, one of the activities, the class lecturer. And we know that some students love lecturing. They, they love talking and blah, 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 blah. So one of the things I like doing uh, when I teach online is uh, to get students to record themselves lecturing on any specific topic. Okay, uh, lecturing is a speaking skill. Um, again, as I said, it's not for us to assess interactive uh, com com communication, but the lecturing is, 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 is a skill that in terms of speaking should be developed. I'm lecturing at this moment. Uh, and so what you can do is, okay, they write everything, any of the stories that they wrote for writing, any of the articles, whatever, 
that they uh, of the readings that they found for reading they can use that same input to record themselves okay uh, um, and practice their speaking okay if they can also choose a topic of their own of course you can uh, ask students to design six or eight comprehension question activities so after they finish recording they create comprehension activities and again you get them working and that guess what that will become listening for the rest so for the rest it will be listening later on and then students will answer the questions okay the rest of the class will answer the questions and and pose them uh, on the platform okay I think I forgot saying here that once the student finished recording himself or herself and thinks of the question, they will share all that information uh, with you and you will upload it to your platform. Okay, and you can have, for example, the lectures of the week. And because remember, we cannot be listening to 300 videos per week. We can say, okay, this week on Monday, Anita will give me uh, a recording. On Tuesday, uh, Pablitos will, is going to give me another recording. So you will have five recordings. And those are the five recordings, recordings that you will correct. During the following week, while more students are giving you recordings with questions, every single day you will upload one of their classmates' recordings, recordings that you corrected from the previous week. And this is how every single day students will have the opportunity of practicing listening. So again, and it's a solution for you. Okay, um, tongue twister challenge. Now, you know that with this COVID, everything is about challenge. We had the toilet paper challenge with, uh, with the footballers. So I think uh, students are into the challenge thing and the tongue twister is, is a nice challenge. So you can give students a tongue twister, okay? either in writing or recorded by you. So that's the challenge for you. Do you want to record yourself reading out loud a tongue twister? Okay, so you can give it to them, okay? It doesn't matter which version, whether written or spoken. Then you will ask students to record themselves saying it three times. Each time, students should read it a bit faster. That's the only condition, okay? In order to share the recording with you, I mean, it should be very obvious that uh, the recording has three speed levels, okay? Um, and they, the idea is that then you will ask students to look for other tongue twisters, okay? And to challenge, of course, any classmate, all right? Now, the, the other thing, the only thing is that in order for you to challenge someone, you need to do it yourself, just like with the uh, footballers and the uh, um, toilet paper, uh, uh, challenge okay one did it and the other have to, to to do it and see if they can do it better or not okay I think this is a cool activity this is this is a, a game kind of uh, for them and we know that tongue twisters are fantastic to work at the level of pronunciation as well uh, with sound with minimal pairs okay and sound patterns now, the PowerPoint story uh, storytelling. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to get students to create a PowerPoint slideshow to tell a story, okay? Now, in order to create the PowerPoint, you're going to ask students to record a video of their computer screen with a slideshow of the PowerPoint as they tell the story. And look at this, this is a fantastic way for you to also integrate, if you use the, the comic uh, tool that I recommended you, or the stories that they drew, okay, with the comics, what they can do is they can simply take pictures of that and every single um, um, image will be a slide in the PowerPoint. They can use QuickTime Player, and with QuickTime Player, you, you assign the area of your screen that you want to be recorded, and they can be telling the story, instead of now writing the story, the written version of the story, this can be, this can be a, a, an audio book, let's say, for that story. So they will be telling the story, but at this time, it can be, they can be just telling the, uh, saying the dialogues, and they can play with tones of voices and making voices, or they can just go for the narrative. Once upon a time, there was a girl, 
blah 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 okay and they 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 move slides in the powerpoint and they record everything and they end up with a video and the cool thing i don't know if you noticed but all the speaking activities that i ask students to do is uh, they are all speaking activities in which they don't need to record their faces and i try to look for activities in which they don't record themselves so that you uh, the images of minors are not online and parents cannot give you any trouble with that okay in this case is we will always be listening to their voices okay so once they are done you're going to tell students to post their videos in the class forum okay again together with some comprehension questions why because the idea is that students the classmates will listen to that and and will will also answer the questions but at this time it will not just be listening it will be a video it will be animated so it will be different uh okay so i i think this is cool all these are activities that you can say oh this week i'm going to implement this activity this week i'm going to implement this other activity and if you look at it you have activities enough varied activities for more than i would say probably a month and a half two months okay the other activity and i have two more to go the other activity is recording uh course book tasks okay um we know that all the course books have speaking activities um and we need the interaction okay i mean speaking cannot just be at the monologue level so we really need the interaction uh, and and course books have that and if you paid attention all the course books in the um speaking section the good course books in the speaking sections they always model the the activity okay that students are expected to produce with audio materials so you're going to ask students okay to listen to this okay to do all the activities but in the end what they're going to do is you're going to tell them it's like okay now we're going to send the audio material to the writer of the book okay so they are going to record themselves using using their mobiles uh, it can be their mobiles it can be whatsapp they can phone themselves through whatsapp okay um and they can use their voice notes in the in their in their mobile and as as they they are they have the conversation going in whatsapp the voice notes in the phone is recording the conversation when they finish uh, whoever is recording hangs up the, the whatsapp call stops the conversation and then what they have to do is they need to um, upload that conversation on the platform now that uploading should be through private messaging so if you're using uh google classrooms if you're using a schoology if you're using model if you, i mean whatever you're using uh through private message because you really don't want everybody to to listen to all the students performance okay so this is assessment that's for you and again you do it because it's interactive so it's not that you need to listen one listening for recording per student that you have in the classroom okay so i think this is cool and um the other activity the other activity is uh, and this is the last activity that i have for you today is making a website of a video ads uh, as a video ad no sorry making a website video ad so basically what we are going to do is we are going to ask students to promote a, a, a website on video again they will be using quicktime player okay we really don't want to to see their faces so this can be like a commercial let's say in that, that they can see on on the on the tv where where they generally see the images of a product or something in this case we can make them believe that they have been hired okay as marketing people okay to 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 promote a website so they're going to choose a website of their choice of course my favorite website is the richmond website okay and i'm going to make a video recommending this website okay so students are going to record themselves describing what the website is about what features it has uh, describing special sections in the website uh, and giving their overall opinion this is an adaptation of the blogs activity remember that uh, they, it was a blog log 
uh, activity. We gave them the log that they needed to complete, and then they recommended blogs to their classmates. This is this is this is uh, an adaptation, but for websites. And kids are in websites all the time. They're uh, websites for video games, websites for news, websites for uh, videos. If um, if it can be a YouTube channel, they can create a video describing you a YouTube channel. If they if they follow a, a YouTuber, okay, they can create a, a, a version of that. And what they are going to do is the students are going to post the videos in the class forum, and at this time, classmates will just comment on it. Oh yeah, I also uh, go into that website, or I have never seen it, and I love uh, uh, swimming, so that's that's really cool. So again, as you can see, all the activities are were activities that um, have the student as the at the center. They are all personalized activities. They are activities that can integrate uh, your course book and the material that is online. There are students that really facilitate our life. There are materials that keep students busy, but not busy in a useless way. Busy uh, so that they can be creating. Let's say. All right, so my agenda for today, even though I exceeded time, was to discuss the advantages of, on, of teaching skills online, and I, I could get to cover that, and also to look into possible activities to implement uh, using either the coursebook or online resources, and we all did it, and I'm impressed and extremely happy for the number, the high number of people that stay online and uh, even though I exceeded time, just remember that this is, these are difficult times. If we don't team up with your students, this will be a battle that we really will lose. Uh, it will be horrible to fight. So try to team up with students, try to think of activities in which they become the creators and not simply the doers, okay? If we work together with students, we will have a better time, they will have a better time, and this will be a lot uh, richer for either party. Okay, so thank you really so very much for, for your time here. I hope this has been of use. And now uh, I'm open to questions. Kime, I don't know how you, 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 you want to, to do this. Okay, uh, let me just drink some water in the meantime. Yeah, no, I'm getting lots of thank yous, amazing webinars. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience. Not actual questions, lots of thank yous. You're fantastic, excellent. Thanks, Nico, it was a pleasure. You're probably you. seeing all that as well, no? So <laughs> rather than questions, we're getting lots of thank yous. Indeed, Nico, it was really, really good. Thank you, yeah. thank you very much for finding the time. To do My it. Pleasure. It, it was really amazing the activities were actually lots of fun just to listen to you explaining them i can only imagine them in the classroom so thank you thank you very much My no pleasure. questions whatsoever rather lots of your amazing awesome material <laughs> thank yeah, you i can read that i can read that thank you thank you guys thank you everyone uh for staying thank you also for all the thank yous uh uh, of course, uh, I think that we teachers, we love sharing. I love sharing with, uh, with my colleagues. Um, so um, I, really, I really hope that this can be uh, a learning opportunity for all of us, not just for students. Um, remember that um, you, you can contact your Richmond rep, Kime. You can tell them uh -huh. about this. Okay. Yeah, about uh, the recordings, and we just want to ask you for patience for the certificates. You must understand that we have to produce thousands of them. So please be patient. When they are ready, you will be getting them uh, to the email address you used to register for each session. But give us some time, please. All right. <laughs>